and welcome to some midweek crafting. Tonight we're going to have some fun and we're going to make an interactive metallic gel card. So if you've seen a previous video of mine, we did gel shaker cards. That's linked here in the top right hand corner. You can click that one and check that one out. Tonight we're going to make a metallic version. I'm going to share with you several different products that you can use to make the same effect. Um, but anything with mica powder in it is going to work great. So this is my mica powder set from Arteza. I love this. I've had it for about three years and I've used it in many, many different projects. It's got tons of colors in it. So if you're looking for a good mica powder crafting set, this is a really good one. I will do my best to link everything down below for you as well. Explosion powders, pixie powders, those kinds of things will also work. They have pigment and mica powder in them. We are going to obviously need some hair gel and I've also got some makeup. So you can go to the dollar store pound shop, get some really cheap makeup in whatever color you fancy and that will also work. However, I will share the results of them with you and the makeup is kind of the most difficult one to work with. It doesn't blend as well as the other powders do. So I've got some cellophane bags, stir stick, a little mixing container, and we're going to crack on. So the first one is just using some old Avon makeup that I found in my stash. I don't even know why I've got this super dark purple, but <laughs> I decided to use it for crafting. As you can see here, it didn't quite mix all the way through. It kind of You can kind of see the little pigment kind of stains in it, and it's very, very dark and a bit translucent. My next one is this powder here, which is the Explosion Powders by Pretty Gets Gritty. It's got pigment and it's got mica in it. This was probably my favorite one out of all of them. It gives you quite a nice swirly look to it. This one here is the Arteza Mica Powder. You can see it is nice and pigmented, not quite as swirly as the other one. So here's a comparison again, going back to the Pretty Gets Gritty Explosion Powders. You can really see that kind of swirly metallic -y look, which is what I was looking for. This one here is a powdered eyeshadow, so it was a glittery powdered eyeshadow that you dust on. It wasn't solid, it was loose. And here's the eyeshadow. You can see it's kind of a bit translucent. It's really, really difficult to share with you in the camera, but it did have lots of specks in it. So here they all are. Here's all four as a kind of close-up, a little review, so you can see what they look like if you were to use each of those. Now, as a quick reminder, if you enjoyed tonight's video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe means the world to me and it does help me to keep funding my channel and keep creating these fun crafts for you. So for all those demos I tried to keep them blue so you could see the difference but for my first card I really wanted to go gold so I've got my Arteza gold mica powder and I'm going to toss in some glitter for extra shine as well and these two are kind of the same sort of shades of gold sometimes you can get a very yellowy gold sometimes you can get a more pale pastel gold so I chose two that were the same. I'm going to plop them in my container, squeeze in some of that hair gel. You really don't need much. And as a warning, it might be worth finding hair gel that doesn't have a scent to it. This stuff was gassing me out by the end. I don't know what it was, but I picked it up from the pound shop. It was one pound for the thing, and it was so super stinky. I couldn't take it by the end. I ended up putting a mask on to use it. Now, I have got Pretty Gets Gritty, this amazing die set. It has got tons of dyes in it, and they are really fun. You'll see at the end, they have ones that kind of layer inside each other. It's really quite cool. So for the colors for this card, I have used Black Soot, Seedless Preserves, and Chip Sapphire. And I've gone ahead and ink blended those onto some watercolor card because I am going to add some liquid on top, and therefore I wanted it to kind of not soak through the card too much and it also helps with the blending ink blending these are oxides by the way so they are water reactive inks which is really nice this is just a shimmer pen so I've gone ahead and splashed down some shimmer splashes so I've got this kind of sparkle almost like a night sky look I'm going to use some mint tape to hold it on in place where I want it to be when you do this make sure your tape is on the inside of your die otherwise it will pull up some of that color on your background now I always check to make sure my panel will fit nicely behind my card front. I've made this panel slightly smaller to kind of fit behind my die cut. So I measured my panel according to the size of my die cut and I made my card base according to the size of my die cut. So that's how I usually work with my card making. Now this is an acetate envelope bag. You can see here, I think it is an A6 one. I have so many of these in all different sizes. We are going to take it and we are going to place it so that the flap that you would fold over is on the facing the back, if that makes sense. You'll see in a second what I mean. We are going to wrap our acetate bag around our card. So this piece of cardstock is not inside the bag. 
it is on the outside on the back of it and we are going to tape it securely in place wrapping it nice and tight so none of that gel is going to seep through to the back parts of this bag so I'm just using some normal sellotape taping it down and I'm making sure I put lots on more the better so I've got that pocket there my piece of card is on the back side of it and the flap is facing the back I'm going to put one little scoop of this gel mix in there so you can see it's not a huge scoop sort of almost like the less is more you want to make sure that you get that gel covering your whole background but you don't want so much that you can't see through it because then it takes away that magic people don't realize that you can kind of squish it move it around manipulate it kind of thing so I'm just spreading it out here it was just that one little scoop spreading it out all over inside that pocket and then I'm going to peel off the release bit of tape on the back of that and I'm going to just seal down those two sides there and make sure they're nice and secure. Then I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to tape up the open part of that cellophane bag. So I'm going to apply that tape on. Now again, you can watch my other video if you want to see this again a second time on those other cars. I do the same thing there. And all I'm going to do, just make sure it's really super well taped. So I am sealing that thing right up. I don't want any gel leaking out. I don't want a mess. And at the same time, I have not put that much gel in there. So it shouldn't seep out. But just in case, I'm going to tape the living daylights out of it. So now you can see my gel is all in there. It's not going to squish out to the back. It's not going to squish out the top. And I've tried to make sure while doing it that I got as much air out as I could. You don't really want air bubbles. But you can see the effect it has. You can tell it's kind of an interactive card. You can see the swirls and the mica powder. You can see that glitter really beautifully. Now again, same thing. We're going to stick it onto the back of our card front. And we are just going to tape the daylights out of it. <laughs> We're just going to tape it all around. Make sure it's nice and stuck to that panel. And if you're a little bit clever and you're, you're forward thinking, you'll put a little bit of adhesive on that card front as well. So I do have to apply my adhesive as an afterthought because I kind of forgot that the details of my die make it so that it kind of sticks up and pops out. So I did put a little bit of glue just under those little flaps. Um, I kind of lifted it up and stuck it down underneath that bobble. Now to add a bit of a frame to it, oh here we go, I did leave that footage in, I forgot. So I'm just appearing a bit of glue in there just to make sure it sticks down nicely. I did want a border, so I went with a fun rough drawn border on the edge with my Arteza gel pen. And then now I can stick it to my base. I'm going to use some super duper sticky tape, this is red line tape, you can get it at almost any shop. And I've taped all over the middle of it. Now here's a top tip for you. I did struggle with getting my foam tape nice and thin to fit around that edge. Because our project is so bulky, you need some foam tape to kind of make it line up level with your card. Now this is the common issue, is trying to cut it is a sticky mess. Even if you have no stick scissors like I have, it can still stick. Take a cutting mat, take a steel edged ruler, take your craft knife. If you've got the Tim Holtz ruler, you can see exactly how straight your line is going. You can line it up through that see-through ruler with the grid lines, and you can get the skinniest bits of tape. So this is foam tape from Arteza, and you can, get it, you can cut it down really, really skinny. So massive top tip. I did half my card before. I thought, how on earth can I cut this easier so I can line it up? And it takes seconds. That was real time there, me cutting it up. But you can see how thin these are. Really, really handy top tip. So you can go ahead and cut up some foam tape and stick it around a nice thin edge if that's what you have to work with. Then you can go ahead and stick it onto your card base. And now I'm going to decorate, embellish it, finish off the card. One of my other top tips to make your word dies a bit easier to work with if they're really skinny and small is you can take some of your double sided tape, you can buy this at any dollar store pound shop, there all these places sell this kind of tape. Really cheap, really cheerful and it works great for die cuts. Don't forget that you can just take that, put it on the back of some card and now you have a sticky sentiment that can go on your card and you didn't have to buy the expensive A4 sheets of double sided sticky tape. So remember that for small sentiments it works a dream. This Merry Christmas die was part of the overall set from Pretty Gets Gritty. Now she does have a discount code for me and I will pop that in the description box with a link to the products as well so you can get 10% off every order if you want to purchase anything from her. These are those dies I was telling you about. When you die cut them, they cut layers. So I just cut between foil card and glitter card and got some beautiful cute little embellishments and I kind of stuck those on and finished off the card. I did trace around my die to give my little die cut a border 
but now it's this gorgeous fun interactive squishy card now obviously you could take any dies or you could cut yourself a shape in the middle of your piece of cardstock and do it that way or if you've got a big die like the one I just used, you could use that. However, for this card, I decided to go with shades of pink and do a butterfly card because I got some new dies and stamps last week from Craft Stash. Um, and I purchased these ones because I like the fact that it comes with tons of dies and tons of butterfly stamps. I have an obsession with butterflies. These dies, however, don't cut an outside border. So you can see in the packaging they send you the outside border, but they cut into the cardstock. So if you have these dies, which I usually find really irritating because I think, well, oh, I don't want to cut it in. Um, they're quite fun because you can then cut them into your cardstock and then you can have that kind of see-through element and they're just sort of in your cardstock and you don't have to die cut them fully out, which is quite fun. So I've die cut these butterflies into my cardstock. I'm using a white acrylic pen and I'm just adding a border. I'm doing sort of dashes and I always forget to grab my ruler, but my ruler gives me nice straight dashes. Otherwise I start wobbling all over the card. I've drawn on some of the antennas and then the little trails from the butterflies are actually a stamp that was in that set. Now I'm going to add on some sequins to sort of finish it off and some sentiments with my new LDRS, I think how you say it, um, stamps and dies. These are fantastic. I just cut a whole bunch of them out at one time and then I keep them in a little pot on my desk and they're ready to go. Now this isn't as effective as the big open die, but you can still sort of see that gel squishing around. It's just not as obvious that you need to squish it. I did put holographic card as my base behind the gel but I thought I'd give you another idea to work with if you've got some of those dies that stick into your cardstock. This one, however, a nice big open area is quite fun. You can really see how that gel will move around and interact on the card. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you give it a go yourself. I would love it if you liked and subscribed to my channel. And if you would like to join my Facebook group, the link for that is in the description box down below the video. You can pop over there, join and share any of your makes with us, whether they be paper craft, sewing, whatever your heart desires. We love seeing all crafts over there. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday night. Take care. Have a fabulous week. Bye.